Hello, everybody. Welcome to It Was Tuesday with your host, James Chen, a.k.a. Jay Chenzor. Also co-host over here, uh, Nathan the Cat. Uh, but we're going to have a little short topic over here to, to discuss here because this is something that just came up on Twitter recently. As you can see here, uh, I'm talking about old school execution. Uh, I had a conversation with uh, somebody on Twitter recently, and uh, <laughs> it was kind of a contentious topic a little bit. And it was definitely talking a little bit about, you know, old school execution versus new school execution, you know. Um, you know, I don't want to, I'm, the reason why I'm not naming any names right now, because I, I'm not mad at anybody. I'm not trying to call anyone out or anything like that. But, you know, the, the idea was that, you know, uh, modern game execution is a lot easier than it was for older games. And so, you know, that removes a lot of depth from modern games. Because on a lot of older games, for example, you know, it, took, it would take longer for us to really become proficient at you know, certain things because you know, it's just difficult and not obvious that it's something that you can do and it'll take time to get to that point. And I was arguing that, you know, uh, like let's talk about MVC2. That was one of the main games uh, in, that, in the discussion. I was saying that if it came out today, I just don't think it would take that long for us to get to a maximum point of the game as it took back in the day, regardless of the fact that, yes, MVC2 is the most execution-heavy fighting game in history, in my opinion, uh, with Melee right there behind it as a second, like not even that far, far of a second. Uh, but uh, I really feel like we're just better at fighting games these days and we would go into a game like, like if MVC2 was released today, we would go into it looking for ROM infinites, you know? Like that's just how we are now because a lot of times we know what we're looking for nowadays. You know, I've talked about how, you know, we have terminology for things now. Like in order to do ROM infinites, like you kind of have to plink. And like back in the day, I couldn't actually tell you how to plink. Like, like I would have to say, you got to hit the two buttons as fast as you can. Kind of like try to slide your fingers or whatever like that. You know, back in Super Turbo, Daigo had this crazy technique where he would jump at Honda. After he knocked Honda down, he would jump at Honda with this strange timing that if he hit roundhouse and Honda did nothing, he would block. But what Honda, but what would happen is if Honda actually headbutt, he would be invincible, but Ryu could actually land first. And then he would input a DP so that if the Honda actually headbutt, the DP would beat the headbutt. But if Honda didn't headbutt, he would actually jump roundhouse and like the DP input would actually get eaten up by the... Nowadays, if I'm just like, hey, so Daigo used the uh, safe jump option select. <laughs> that's what I would say today. <laughs> that's, that's what I would say today, you know? Like honestly, uh, it's, it's, we have language that has made it a lot more easy, but... I had a whole thing that I wanted to, I, I almost tweeted out uh, and I just was like, you know what, sometimes you're just better off not tweeting these things out because you just don't want to get into it. But what I'm just going to do here is basically kind of just read what I wanted to say about this topic here uh, because it's so much more nuanced, right? Uh, it's so much more nuanced when you're actually talking about, you know, like, uh, like Mike is saying, you know, games have been slowly getting easier constantly since the beginning. And this is a good thing it's gotten easier, right? Like that's part of the conversation here uh, as well. But yes, are games today easier than they were a long time ago? Yes. But in terms of what that says about game depth, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, the goal might not be to say that older games were better than newer games. Maybe that's not the point of the conversation. But arguing about the depth of the game is where it gets a little bit trickier there. And this is kind of the thing that I really wanted to, to discuss. So 
again, this was going to be like 20 tweets long because that's just who I am and I'm stream of consciousness. So it's better off in video form anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and read this whole thing. Save your questions that you want to ask. Save the discussion points you want to talk about until I'm done because I'm just going to read straight through this thing. I really should have put it on my teleprompter, but that's fine. You guys get to see me staring at my phone here. But um, this, is, this is what I wanted to say. <clears throat> the dangerous part about glorifying execution in older games is that most of the time the difficulties in execution weren't intentional. They were literally the results of mistakes and ignorance a lot of the time, and devs today wouldn't put them in intentionally anymore. And this is coming from a person who loves execution. I loved making combo videos, and I loved doing things that felt impossible just to show I can do it. But if you're making a new fighting game today, with the knowledge that we have, and the attempts to make things esports, would you do it intentionally? <laughs> I played a pre release build of Skullgirls, and the pace of its moves were different than a Marvel game. It made doing some combos very awkward, and I told Mike Z about them. He was literally at my house. I told him to add more leeway to things. And these things are praised by people today. Like if you try to jump cancel a launcher too early, it'll buffer and still make you jump if you tapped up before it hit. Yes, this is a true story. The reason why that feature, I'm going off script here, the reason why that exists in Skullgirls is because of me, <laughs> okay? I told him to put that in there because a lot of his launchers were slower in frame data than they were in Marvel. So a lot of times I would chain into a launcher, hit up and let go, and I wouldn't jump because the frame data was generally a little slower. And so I told him, if you press up in that situation, if it launches and I've already let go, detect if I've hit up during the startup, give it a few frames of leeway and let it jump cancel. And he put that in there. Same thing with chaining a lot of the buttons from move to move to move. They were slower in pace than they were in Marvel games. So he made a leeway that you could press a button and it would actually check a few frames later to see if you actually connected and still chain for you. Literally, those features exist in Skullgirls because of me. Okay, a lot of people don't know all the little things that I've touched in fighting game history, okay? He brought a pre-release build to my house, I played it, and I told him to do that. <clears throat> Continuing on, you look at a game like Celeste, and I've retweeted the thread about all the concessions they made to make the game feel smoother but it doesn't detract from what makes the game fun and still feel very skillful. It makes it feel good. The execution in older games come largely from just not knowing any better. One frame links in Street Fighter 4 were complained about forever, but they were considered high execution. Should we maintain that or not? There's no right answer to this question. It just depends on your philosophy. Honestly, without one frame links, we won't get the hype of evil reused Daigo versus Momochi again uh, in a Street Fighter 6 game. We're not gonna get that kind of hype in Street Fighter 6 because we know how hard it was for Daigo to do that evil Ryu combo on Momochi. But is that considered good design to have one frame links? Some will say yes, some will say no. And so it's up to you as a dev to decide which way to go. Street Fighter V and Street Fighter VI went the other direction, not in a way I particularly like, because it changed the way Street Fighter plays fundamentally forever via the input buffer. Uh, honestly, the input buffer is what has made Street Fighter V and VI far more frame data heavy. So I've never personally been a fan of that, uh, but that input buffer was put in to fix one frame links. And so as a result, we have a completely different game, right? And so again, should we go back to one frame links? I don't know. 
Probably not, probably so. Depends on what you want your game to be. Anyways, continuing on. But that was the decision made. Is it wrong? I can't say. People say we've lost individuality, but 7,000 entrants at EVO is also kind of an important goal. When we detract from modern games for trying to be more accessible by making the games feel better, it's a dangerous path. Do we praise roll canceling? Praise zero lightning loops? Does it have to be one or the other? A game like Exert has always been one of my favorite examples of a game that has complex execution, but it feels good and smooth. It feels great to do things without unnecessary barriers. When we talk about how clunky MVC2 felt, making it one of the highest execution games in existence, is that praise or a condemnation? If you made your own game today, would you make it clunky on purpose to force execution? The biggest proof that these execution requirements were accidents is literally you can see the philosophy of how MVC2 was made, was designed. It was supposed to be the mashing friendly easy game. One button assists, we lost two attack buttons. People were pissed before this game released and early on. And so uh, just to add to this, dude, people were mad. They were like, you took away my medium buttons. You've just killed all the depth in this game. There is no more depth in this game. I don't want one button assist buttons. I want to be able to choose to use my medium buttons whenever I want to. This game is scrubby. This was the original MVC2 thought process. I famously tell the story that I dropped my gamepad on the floor and got a 100 plus hit combo in MVC2. The game was designed to be casual and it was by chance it became the most complex and high execution game ever made. Don't let people fool you into thinking it was designed to be deep. Moves like the Stun Palm of Death in Virtua Fighter, Tool, Virtua Fighter 2 was known for its super high execution barrier. We used to just put quarters into the machine just to see who could do it even one time. In later VFs, it's much easier. Does that detract from those VF games? Again, there's no right answer. No one will sit here and tell you by the way, going off the script again, that modern Virtua Fighters are scrubby because Stun Palm is easier to do now. If you've never actually tried to do Stun Palm of Death, Death or Akira Knee in VF2, you don't know what difficult execution is. <laughs> Those shit were hard, okay? Are the older games more execution heavy? Yes. Is that good design? I don't know. Was it even design at all or more, more, more likely just an accident? Even as an old schooler, myself as an old schooler, I'm so wary of our tendency to overpraise the past. Super Turbo is my favorite fighting game, but it's a piece of junk. But you know what? Like the Millennium Falcon, it's my piece of junk, and I love it for that reason. It's great to praise and show love to the classics, but we shouldn't get caught in the it was better before mindset. When we're playing Street Fighter VIII, people will be lauding Street Fighter V for its skill. And that's basically kind of where I stopped writing and was like, you know what, I, I can't tweet this. I just, I can't tweet this. I don't want to start this. I just don't, I've just, I'm learned better than this now to, to start this whole entire thing. Um, but honestly, I do think it's an interesting conversation because I was talking to Olaf about this and he was talking about how the execution in a lot of old games are because the input interpreter sucked. The input interpreter sucked. 
And that's why, like, some of those old games, like old KOF games that he, you know, obviously he's familiar with those. That's why it was hard to do a lot of stuff in KOF. Now, is that good design? Or is that a mistake? Like, I think the DP interpreter for Street Fighter V and VI are woefully too loose. So I would like them to be tighter. But would, is it good then to bring it back to Street Fighter I degree? <laughs> Is it right to bring it back to Street Fighter 1 degree where it's super hard to do anything that increases execution? Is that something that we praise or not? If we talk about a game like MVC2 and we talk about Sentinel Fly on Fly and we talk about, you know, Magneto ROM Infinites and stuff like that, you know, if you made a game today, would you intentionally do that? Would that be something that you would do on purpose? And again, the, 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 you know, the, the, the thought process too of how this difficult execution makes it so that older games have more depth and are harder to learn and harder to actually, you know, for us to become good at. I, I, I don't agree with that. I just think we're so much smarter at fighting games these days. And we're still going to get even smarter but here's the difference. In today's day and age, the first time someone unflies with Sentinel in MVC2 in today's era and flies again before landing on the ground, somebody on some stream is going to go, wait, what happened? And then you're going to have 9,000 people trying to figure out what's going to happen. And you don't need to plug in a second controller to launch Sentinel so you can test fly unfly. You would use the save state and the reset training mode option to always just sit there and test it. <laughs> like the ability of training mode to be stronger, the fact that we have better training mode, the fact that we have way more scientists and more knowledge and we understand frame data better, the fact that, you know, we just know how things work a lot better, we will find things so much faster. And yeah, someone uh, said to me, it was like, well, look at the Brady Games guide for MVC3. Plink dashing was in there, but it took six months before people actually started implementing plink dashing. Like even in more modern times, it, took, it was hard to disseminate information. But you just said the Brady Games guide, which is a physical paper book Clearly, this is not the same era as we are in today. <laughs> Clearly, it is not the same era we are in today. And what happens today? Sure, maybe the YouTube videos out there won't be plethora trying to teach you how to plink dash, but you're just going to watch someone on stream and they're going to plink dash. And someone in chat is going to go, how are you moving that fast? And the, the, the streamer, the popular streamer will be like, I'm using plink dash. You do it by doing this. And it spreads, and it spreads. People do this all the time when they watch fighting game streams. Wait, how did you do that? Oh, it works like this. And you get that information. It's just so different. It's so different, the, the, the environment we live in today. Back on the SRK days, we still had the people are, we had so many people who were like, I could beat John Choi and Alex Vai. And why did they say that? There's no footage of John Choi and Alex Vai for anybody to see. That's the era we were still in. Today, you see the best players all the time. And you have an opportunity to play people who are better than you all the time. You don't have that anymore. We aren't in that era. The um, era of information that we're in right now is absolutely ridiculous. Is absolute, like I said, Punk changed Street Fighter V because he was doing single hit confirms. If it wasn't for Punk, I would still be telling people that hit confirming off of one button is impossible. Because I've believed that my whole life. I have believed that my whole life that you can only convert off of kit confirm from two buttons unless you had a giant cancel window like Chun-Li crouching medium kick. I have, I never believed you could do a, a single hit confirm. And then Punk was just doing it. And I literally had to ask him, I was like, are you actually just confirming off of the hit or not hit? And he's like, yeah. 
And guess what? Everyone had to learn it. Everyone had to learn it. That's the inform- That's the era we were we are in. It's just not the same thing anymore. It's just not the same anymore. So no, if MVC2 came out today, we would figure it out super fast. We may start down the same path that Iron Man is completely broken, but we would get to the point where clearly Magneto and whoa, this fly on fly thing and Storm, we would get there pretty fast. Keep in mind too that we found Air Hyper Viper Beam day one of the home release. Tom and Tony Cannon posted up a video and it ended with Air Hyper Viper Beam times four. This was day one, this was hour one that that video dropped. But nowadays, like, dude, the amount of things that we would find is ridiculous. So, is Chun's crouching medium kick actually only 17 frames to confirm, Mike Lee? Is that actually true? That's wild. It feels way longer. It feels way longer. That's crazy. But again, you know, I mean, I know that this wasn't intended, you know, by the original poster to be a old games are better than newer games. At least I don't think that was the intention. But again, like the narrative that, you know, older games are deeper, that modern games are not as deep because it's so easy to do everything. I just don't think is true. (laughs) I just don't think it's true. And again, I'm a person who wants more execution in fighting games. I don't want to take away execution. I, I, I like if you, if you had me five years ago, I would tell you modern control is the devil, like a lot of other people. You know, to me, like when I play Grand Blue, I actually do the motions for everything because I just prefer it because it feels better to me. I want execution in fighting games. I want fighting games to be harder. But at the same time, glorifying what we did in the past, I think is just, like I said, is just dangerous. Because again, if you're making the game today, would you do it? Would you actually do that? And I don't think you would. I really, really just don't think you would. So is it really, are we really, should we really chastise modern games for feeling easier to do? Or is that kind of the right thing to do? As long as we don't make it so that like, there's no execution, <laughs> you know, as long as it's, if there's still joy and fun out of the game. Like I said, I think Exert is the perfect example because Exert doesn't feel clunky and still has a bunch of crazy execution to which I've always said, if you use the hitbox, it doesn't actually cheat. <laughs> Like if I wanted to do Johnny, Johnny miscancel combos in Exert, a hitbox isn't going to give me any advantage. Like that's good execution right there. The execution is just, can you remember what to do? Do you have the timing for it? And it's not about quarter circle forward is hard to do. It's about, can you do it, time it, and, and remember what you're supposed to do and have the dexterity on it, you know? And yeah, exactly, Mike Lee. And this is, this is what I'm trying to say. Modern games are hella not, are not hella simple. It's just a bias of what you played more and grew up on. And I of anybody, and yeah, and most of the complicated stuff are glitches. And I of anybody, out of everybody, I should be the one the most stuck in the past. Because I've been playing this shit since Street Fighter 2. But the thing is, I, this isn't, I try so hard not to get myself into that rut. I try so hard to not get myself into that rut. Yeah, low short, low short super with Ken in Super Turbo. Why does everybody play Ken in Super Turbo? Because everybody likes to do low short, low short super in Japan. It's fun execution. It was a glitch. It wasn't supposed to happen. I still remember talking to Serlin during the HDR days and he was like, let me take that out because that shouldn't be hard to do. We shouldn't hide that behind something. Everyone should be able to do it. And I was like, no, don't take it away. That's like one of the most fun things to do. You know, like that's where I was. I was in that situation. Would I do it differently today? Hell no. Hell no. Cause super turbo is super turbo. You leave that shit in there. Okay. But if we're talking about mine, modern games, 
If I were to make a new Street Fighter today and I forced you to do low short, low short, render Kara cancel to be able to go into a super, I would be insane. I would be insane. Low short is crouching light kick. Crouching light kick. So what you're actually doing with a render Kara cancel for Ken is you're doing low short. So the first frames of every normal can be canceled to a special move or a super. Once you do low short, low short, you cannot cancel your short anymore into a special move. There is no such thing as low short, low short, low short fireball in super turbo. You can do low short fireball, but as soon as you chain it, you cannot cancel it anymore. So low short, low short super is not allowed. You cannot cancel it. Unless you rend the carrot cancel it, which is low short, low short, chain into standing light kick, but the first frame of every normal can be canceled into a special or a super because of the fact that you can carrot cancel every normal move. So you're actually doing crouching light kick, crouching light kick, standing light kick for one frame empty canceled into the super. That's how you do low short, low short super in super turbo. Is that fun? Fuck yeah, it's fun. I love doing that shit. Does it feel good when I do it? Yeah. Do I want it out of Super Turbo? Never. Would I purposely put it into a modern game? I'd be kind of stupid if I did. I'd be kind of stupid if I did. <laughs> right? So that's my point. It's like, are we dumbing down fighting games or are we actually just trying our best to make them fun to play? And like I said, I'm not... I'm not for removing execution. I want execution. But there's a balance between those two where we don't have to overpraise what happened in the past. We don't have to sit there and say older games are deeper because of this execution barrier, because the games were designed incorrectly. <laughs> Fly Unfly for, for Sentinel is a glitch. It's 100% a glitch. It was not supposed to happen. It's what made him one of the best characters. Roll canceling in CVS 2, 100% a glitch. Has it made the game more balanced? Absolutely. Did roll canceling kind of make CVS 2 a better game? Most people will tell you yes. Would we ever do it on purpose again? No. No, we wouldn't. We would not. And this is why I'm saying it's dangerous to glorify the execution of old games. We can still do it without it. If you are, like, if you're saying under night in birth right now, look, go under night in birth, go to Carmine, play trial 512, and come back and see me later, okay? <laughs> go do Carmine trial 512, and then we can talk a little bit later. Under night in birth still exists. That game is hella execution heavy. But it doesn't have, like, all these crazy glitches that are really weird, you know, it's, it's about knowing your combo paths, it's about knowing which starters that you've used, et cetera, et cetera. Oh yeah, do the Yuzuriha trials, exactly. So again, you know, it's dangerous to glorify modern execution. And that's just really what I'm trying to come down to. The person who said that the older games are harder and have more execution, as a result, they are being more deep, is true. It is true. It wasn't intentionally done that way, though, right? So is that something we praise? You know, uh, Magnetro famously made, uh, you know, Olaf was telling me this, Magnetro famously made a DVD on how to play Dalsum in MVC2. Because he just wanted, and it was a tool assisted DVD because he wanted to show what Dawson was actually capable of, but people just weren't able to do. Like, if people could actually do this, Dawson would be busted. And Justin Wong recently played Dawson on MVC2 on his stream and murdered everybody with Dawson because he was able to do things that he wasn't able to do before because he's just better at fighting games now. And you can't sit there and tell me he wasn't good back then. <laughs> he was the best player on the planet. <laughs> but he's actually using Dalsum now. And he was able to kick ass in ways that he wasn't able to do before because we're just better at fighting games. Again, are the older games more deep because of these things? Yeah, probably. 
But is that something that we should praise even when it wasn't intentional? Are we designing fighting games today incorrectly by not putting in crazy execution? Right? That's, that is the point that I'm trying to bring. That is the point that I am trying to bring. Almost anybody worth their salt designing a fighting game right now would 100% not put in a lot of these things that made older games more execution heavy, you know? And that's, that's just really what it comes down to. So there you go. Um, that's my take on that situation. Um, yeah, dude, when you play newer players, you have such a legacy advantage over them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you guys, um, if you guys have any points to make or any conversations, I've been looking at the chat a little bit, but you guys have any questions on anything I said, any counterpoints, any a little extra things that you want to, you know, add to this, you know, um, but I just, I, it was something that bothered me so much when we're talking about older games, you know, like, you know, like, oh, you, you don't believe that these games are harder? Like, launch this game, try it out, see how clunky it is. And like I said, would you design a game to be clunky? Like, would you do that today? And so I don't know what the point of bringing that up is, you know? Yes, older games felt worse to play. <laughs> <laughs> aren't we happy that we're changing that you know that's that's kind of how i approach this topic uh i do not see anybody in the chat talking which means i apparently did a very very good job talking my point here uh again i just think that this conversation is so nuanced it's so subtle that we can't just sit there and go old games new games and I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying anybody said old games are better, but it's just like, old games, worse, new games, better. Or old games, better, new games, worse. Like, it's, you, this conversation can't happen. It can't happen. It's so much more detailed. It's so much more nuanced than that. And again, I'm not saying anybody was trying to say new games or older games were better, but I just don't like the discourse of saying old games were Newer games are, I don't like that discourse very much, basically. So, yeah. I mean, what <laughs> the music I grew up with is so much better than the music you grew up with. Man, the day that someone called Red Hot Chili Peppers dad rock, my world was destroyed. And I was like, my God, when I was young, what I thought of the Rolling Stones is what kids today think of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I was like, man, Re Rolling Stones were probably really hip and really rebellious. And man, they probably like were great because that's what I thought of like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I was like, dude, like you listen to Blood Sugar Sex Magic and you're just like, yeah, these guys are super unconventional. They, they're, they're daring, you know, whatever. They swear in their songs and all this stuff. And, you know, and nowadays they're dad rock. And I'm like, oh my God, kill me now, please. <laughs> so the, the, the way it works, Kevin Mati, who says, a low barrier to entry never hurt a fighting game. A high barrier to entry ever, never helped one. Yeah, low barrier to entry, but having a high ceiling. Like, unfortunately, a lot of people talk about games with low barriers of entry as having low ceilings. And a lot of times that does happen, but you can do both. Again, Melee is the best example in the world, right? Melee has the lowest barrier of entry in the world, but Melee is still the second or tied for first highest execution fighting game on the planet. Anybody who thinks that what the high, top players do in Melee is easy because it's Melee and it's Nintendo and it's Kitty, you're stupid. <laughs> you are just stupid. The actions per minute and the timing required in Smash Brothers Melee is second basically to none except maybe for MVC2 or maybe even greater than MVC2. 
You will not find two games in the FGC history that have higher execution than those two games, in my opinion. So there you go. Uh, most people are not saying anything too crazy out there. Um, so no points, no arguments, nothing, no questions. So I feel like I did, uh, I feel like I did a good job expressing my opinion here. What about you guys on YouTube in the chat? Uh, please let me know what you think of uh, my argument here and my statement. So uh, that's just basically all I have to say for this. So uh, do I separate depth and complexity as separate things? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I kind of, because complexity and depth are kind of equal to each other, right? Because, you know, complexity breeds depth, right? But the, the, the big difference is that complexity can come from everything. Uh, complexity can come from anything, whether it's execution, whether it's just the breadth of moves that a character has, whether it's just super robust system mechanics, whether it's, you know, uh, bugs, <laughs> anything, you know, or it's intentional design by the developers. Complexity comes from anything. And as long as you have the complexity, that builds the depth. It is hard to create a deep game without complexity, for sure. So uh, as, as, as deep as a game like Dive Kick and Footsies can actually get, like they're not complex and they're not going to be super deep, right? But that's not their goal. That's not their design. Again, it really just depends as a dev what your goal is, right? Footsies and Dive Kick were not designed to be depth. They were not designed to be super, super complex, deep games, you know? So that's fine. That's really, really just fine. So could old fighting games still be a good way to learn fundamentals? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because the fundamentals in a lot of these old games are so different. That's the hard part, though, uh, White Lens, is that honestly, the concept of fundamentals is so different in every game. Like, if you're talking fighting games today between Tekken and MK1 and Street Fighter VI and, and Guilty Gear Strive and Underdite in Birth and Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, whiff punishing is one of the most important aspects of these games. Like, that is like, you will, people will tell you fundamentals, fundamentals, that is fundamentals, that's part of, you play Super Turbo and honestly, whiff punishing is not that important. <laughs> It's really strangely not that important. Uh, I mean, there are certain situations, Zangief sweep, Ryu and Ken sweep, good for whiff punishing, but would those, is whiff punishing one of the core components of neutral in Super Turbo? No, there's not, it's not. One of the core components of neutral in Super Turbo is Hadouken, 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 Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, Tiger, 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 you're not with punishing that shit, dude. Like, <laughs> you're just not. And, and, and again, Super Turbo was about hitbox fighter. Ryu and Ken's crouching strong didn't with punish Zangief's standing medium kick. It just beat it because of hitboxes. Zangief's crouching sweep didn't beat Ryu and Ken's crouching strong because you with punished it. It beat it because of hitboxes. Low short from Ryu and Ken didn't beat Zangief's crouching sweep because of whiff punishing. It beat it because of hitboxes. Zangief's standing medium kick didn't beat Ryu and Ken's crouching light kick because of whiff punish it. It beat it because of hitboxes. And there you had your triangle in the footsie game between Ryu and Ryu Ken and Zangief. It wasn't designed to be a whiff punish thing. It was a hitbox thing. And so if you went and played Super Turbo like me, you might suck at whiff punishing like me. <laughs> I'm terrible at whiff punishing. Well, that's because most of the games that I played, it just wasn't as important. It just really wasn't. So that's the thing. It's, 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 it's crazy uh, to... Every fighting game is different and it's so good. It's so great. I just recently tweeted that... Uh, you know, the best thing about fighting games that you guys have heard me say this on stream before is that a fighting game never grows old. It never ages. Like, it doesn't matter what Sailor Moon on the SNES looks like. 
If it was a fun fighting game, it's a fun fighting game right now. TMNT Tournament Fighters, still a fun fighting game. It's never going to look old. <laughs> Does Super Turbo and Hyper Fighting look old? Maybe. Doesn't change the way it plays at all. Fighting games, a good fighting game doesn't age. A good fighting game is forever. And that's what makes fighting games great. So every fighting game you play, old and new, old and new, you're going to get something different from every single one of them. And that's what makes it so awesome, dude. It's so great. Uh, recently been playing Alpha 3 a ton, says uh, Karpaslotka. Uh, it's been so damn fun. It's great, right? It's wonderful. Obviously, jump, crouch, cancel, infinite suck. But if you're just starting it, you're not running into that problem right now. So uh, something to add, says Mike Lee. New games won't be giving players crazy carpal tunnel. <laughs> not as bad. For some people, you, they're, they're just, they're, 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 their genes are predisposed in a way that carpal, they're just more susceptible to carpal tunnel. Again, all, as much as every fighting game is different, so is every human is different as well. So... But again, that's just how I feel about it, you know. Will older games still help you with fundamentals? Absolutely. If you play Third Strike, the footsies in Third Strike will help you in Street Fighter V and Street Fighter VI. Street Fighter Third Strike has more with punishy footsies than, uh, than those games, which is probably one of the reasons why I never really got good at Third Strike. The way I play fighting games, I hit buttons to beat your buttons. And that's why when I play modern games, I get whiff punished all day <laughs> by good players. Because I learned a different fundamentals when I was younger playing the games that I played. And that's all it really comes down to. You know, when I was using Sodom in Alpha 1, was I playing footsies? No, I was going, SPD, SPD, SPD. Like, I wasn't playing footsies. I didn't care about footsies, you know? Like, the, it just depends on which games you're playing, uh, what you learn, and how you learn it, so. <laughs> I hope you guys could hear that. I really hope you guys could hear that. Someone is hungry. All right, for those of you guys here on Twitch, we'll do one little watch through the Akuma teaser. Uh, but uh, for those of you on YouTube, again, thank you for watching. Again, leave in the comments. Let me know what you think about this whole discussion that I had over here. And I really, really do hope uh, you do enjoy these conversations. And, you know, I try so hard to approach a lot of different sides. I've had a lot of people tell me that they feel like my channel is like one of the most mature channels when it comes to fighting game discussion and conversation. And that makes me very happy and proud because that is my goal. Everything is a lot more nuanced than, than we like to think it is. And Twitter sucks. So uh, I'm glad to be able to talk about these things here. So... In any case, thank you guys for watching uh, here on YouTube. And, uh, you know, the day that these meows and this podcast graced your ears was the most important day of your life. Right, Nathan? Right, Nathan? Right, Nathan? Yeah. Yeah. But for me... It was Tuesday. <laughs>